Thanks for joining us today on the channel. If you stopped by, more than likely you have an issue with the York Diamond Series Furnace. In this episode, we are going to replace the circuit board in this particular model. As we get inside, we will go through some diagnosis steps as to why we concluded that the circuit board is bad in this particular model. If you're liking the content of this channel and you feel like supporting us, please feel free to hit the subscribe button I don't have any of the diagnostics recorded for this video, but I can walk you guys through essentially what we did. So Wednesday morning, woke up, house was cold, didn't have any heat. So I had already replaced um, the igniter in the back the week prior. And normally on these models, um, if you're getting flame, <clears throat> but you're not getting the complete heating cycle, that's usually your uh, flame sensor element. So that's fairly easy. You can unscrew that out, clean it with some uh, Brillo pad or emery cloth, put it back in. No problem there. So this particular morning, Wednesday, I had no igniter. Obviously, I'm not getting a burn cycle, so I'm not concerned about the flame sensor yet. But I'm getting a fault code um, on the power supply right here. So this has a particular diagram. <clears throat> a certain sequence of lights means there's some sort of fault in this cycle. So I'm getting three flashing lights, which is, according to this list telling me that my uh, pressure switch is stuck closed. So on this model, the pressure switch is right here in the corner. So this is what opens or stays shut to tell the system to allow the burner to fire up and come on. The pressure switch actually gets its negative vacuum pressure from the exhaust fan. So when the exhaust fan kicks on before the burn cycle comes on, that's what's going to draw your exhaust out of the unit. <clears throat> if that's not on, it's not going to tell the pressure switch to close, and then it's not going to let your furnace burn. What I did to kind of figure out what was going on at this point was I hooked... I turned my vacuum on and I just held it close to the the nipple of this switch right here to simulate vacuum for this unit. So as I put my vacuum close to this, the igniter actually started to come on, which is the first sequence in the cycle of the furnace burner coming on. So as I added vacuum here, the igniter heated up. So I was like, okay, maybe my vacuum switch is stuck. Um, open or this is bad maybe the vacuum switch is bad so as that started to happen um, the exhaust fan wasn't turning on so obviously we can't fire this up without the exhaust fan exhausting the gas once we got that far I started to look into here which is where the control board is So, inside the control board here, let's see how close I can get you guys. Um, the control board's in the back, right here, right in front of the, uh, the main fan, the blower fan in the bottom. And <clears throat> as I was tracing back some of these leads for uh, the system as to maybe why the exhaust fan wasn't coming on, you know, checking continuity with the elect with the the lines, making sure there's no break in the line. As we worked our way back to the control board, we found out that we were not getting the correct voltage out of the control board to supply the fan with the adequate amount of voltage to turn on. So obviously my igniter's new. My flame sensor works. My vacuum um, valve, or my, I'm sorry, 
pressure switch is closed or open when it should be. The only other possibility is either the <coughs> exhaust fan motor's bad or we have some sort of power supply issue on the circuit board. So, um, obviously we traced it back to the circuit board not having the correct amount of voltage coming out, so I went ahead and purchased a new circuit board for this model. So, um, what I did was I got the part number off of the body of the circuit board there, ordered the replacement, obviously with 25 years of time, these have kind of been reconfigured, but this is supposed to be a direct replacement for a single stage York um, Robin Air, that family of furnaces. So as you can see, my uh, main power blocks in are in a little bit different configuration than this one, but we should have enough line to make it work. Uh, I will configure the board like this so I can have all my thermostat controls uh, on the bottom on these screws. So let's get these wires labeled and we'll start taking this apart and replace this and see if we can get some heat. So this was our old board, much easier to work with, lots of space, the new one's quite a bit smaller. Um, the only confusing part on this was, not really confusing, but all the neutrals just go into the one area up here, they're not really labeled out, which is fine. Um, your park is over here off to the sides, split off from the the original style up here. You can park heat and cool on this board. Now we got heat and cool up here. Parks off to the side, no problem. Um, all of our thermostat controls were on this one. We had them wrapped around the post. This one you kind of have to just stuff them in from the bottom. And the uh, plug in the back that used to be right here off to the side is now tucked in behind this transformer. A little bit hard to clip in but no big deal so all of our wires are installed where they should be let's see if this thing comes on now it's not going to completely fire on because we have our safety door open but if i give it power i believe that's on As you can see, we're back up and running here. We've got the burn cycles on, exhaust fans running. So that was the original problem. The control board uh, wasn't sending enough power to the exhaust fan to cycle the pressure switch. 
switch closed, and obviously that wouldn't complete the sequence of events to start the furnace. Um, the new control board has a jumper pin in the bottom corner for how long to delay the blower motor from coming on when heat is selected. Uh, it's currently set at 90 seconds, so I put the cover back on because I didn't feel like holding that button for 90 seconds, but once 90 seconds elapsed, you can see the cycle started and everything's running how it should. So if you guys like the video, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe for me. And that way you won't miss any new videos that we come out with. Who knows what it'll be next. It's something with the travel trailer, maybe something breaks down in the house and we figure out how to fix it together. But I appreciate you guys uh, liking and commenting and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.